The Emperor's always looking to trade out. Kill him. Kill him now. The Emperor is kind of a sleazy boyfriend. And he's... <laughs> <laughs> and he's always... <laughs> <laughs> I would diagnose Anakin with something called borderline personality disorder. Now, I want to be very oh, clear. Okay. People with borderline personality disorder don't end up to be they don't turn homicidal into... lunatics. Oh, they don't massacre children and blow up entire planets? No. I oh, want... what, what is this? Tell me on the Sith Lord where the prequels hurt you. Hello and welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist, and I love Star Wars. Happy Star Wars Day. And I am Alan Seawright, professional filmmaker, and I also love Star Wars, even though I'm kind of in an abusive relationship with it. I love it, but it keeps hurting me. You're breaking my heart. You get it. We're gonna work through some of that today. We really are. Today, we are doing villain therapy. Ooh. I know. These are fun. We discuss a famous villain from a film and see if there are things that we could do to treat that person to either prevent them from becoming a villain in the first place, play my video, or if they're already a villain, treat them and, and make them a productive member of society again. Wonderful, and part of what we're doing here at Cinema Therapy is we're trying to increase awareness about mental illness, mental health issues, emotional health issues, and so we want to be very clear, there is not a correlation between mental illness and villainy. And this is one of the reasons why we have another series of hero psychology to show that heroes struggle with these things too. Absolutely. <sighs> oh God, I can't. <laughs> Who is my patient today? Who are we dealing with? Well, we're dealing with a, uh, a young man who was brought up believing that he was basically immaculately conceived, uh, raised by his mother, but they were enslaved. Mm. So not a lot of good things going on there. Did have good. a good relationship with his mom. Does he hate sand? He finds it coarse and rough and it gets everywhere. You already guessed who it is. Uh, <laughs> I am your father. I'm a person and my name is Anakin. I'll just give the rest of his history super fast. Uh, gets taken away from his mom to go to... Don't look back. Uh, Jedi school. But not before starring in Fast and the Furious Tatooine Drift. Ah, uh, how can we not talk about family when families are and we got everything I would do you were standing there by my side and now you gonna be with me for the last... <laughs> he wanted he wanted to say it so bad so bad and he did <laughs> after appearing in a fast and furious movie uh he goes off starts learning how to be a jedi has a father figure who was killed then has a brother figure becomes sort of a father figure who's not that great you will be a jedi i promise um <laughs> You don't, even, you don't even like talking about this. I, I don't can, like can... talking about it. I okay, do. so let's let's address this head on. Let's be real for a second, because this is therapy. You don't like the Star Wars prequels. I hate them. I hate them. They're coarse. They're rough. They get everywhere. <laughs> uh, they're the they're they're bad films. Kids like Jar Jar. Why? What about the Ewoks? Hey, they were rubbish. You don't complain about them. Yeah, but Jar Jar Binks makes the Ewoks look like f Shaft. That being said. The character of Anakin, very interesting. Yeah, okay, so he has a lot of loss, a lot of pain, and then he breaks bad. The separatists have been taking care of my master. Breaks bad, kills a bunch of kids, uh, goes full, full evil. Uh, full, goes full Walter White, he's even bald, you know? Yeah. Turns into a human s'more. Sure. All sorts of stuff. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's really gross. What are his symptoms? His symptoms of, you know, all the loss and everything else, is uh, mostly just being real mopey and whiny. Why couldn't I save her? Yeah. He's, he just gets really, yeah, pretty much just whiny. Kind of arrogant and clingy and demanding. It's all Obi-Wan's fault. He's jealous. He's holding me back. He's also, to be fair, terrified of losing relationships, so terrified that he will do literally anything Make to... a deal with the devil, basically. Learn to know the dark side of the Force, and you will be able to save your wife from certain death. Pretty much, to protect those relationships. Um, mood swings? Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty severe <laughs> mood swings. <laughs> Liar! You brought him here to kill me! No! And just, just general, just, just moodiness. Yeah. He's kind of meh. And then as he goes bad, he actually has delusions. You thunder against me! Like that Obi-Wan's gonna take Padme from him, which honestly, Padme, you had a better option. Padme. 
so much better. <laughs> Go with Obi Wan. Now I like Star. I like the prequels better than Alan does, mostly because I I give a lot of it a pass because I love Star Wars so much and I just like to be in that galaxy. Yeah. I also appreciate uh, what George Lucas was trying to do with Anakin because on the surface we all wanted a very likable dashing hero, like the integrity of Luke and the roguishness of Han wrapped into one character, and we wanted that going into the prequel so that we would be heartbroken and devastated when he fell. Yeah, and that would be of, better. Right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm not arguing the point, but from a mental health perspective, his the, the course he takes and how he gets there makes a whole lot of sense. It does. And I think there is some genius in what George Lucas is trying to do. George Lucas is incredible at world building and at overall like story structure. Yeah. I think the prequels, as George Lucas came up with them, if he had hired someone else to write them and someone else to direct them, mm -hmm. could have been brilliant films. I just think that him taking on all of it was maybe not great. I've had a few things to work through, you know. With Sarah? No, with George Lucas. shop for other directors? I heard that he, he did. I mean, he went and talked to Steven Spielberg. And Ron Howard. I think and he went Ron to those Howard, two, yeah. And, and they both were like, no, it's yours, George. And maybe that was because they read the scripts. <laughs> oh, man. This I don't is, know. You know what? Okay, that's it. Oh, I want... what, what is this? Tell me on the Sith Lord where the prequels hurt you. I want you to point. <laughs> where the prequels hurt me. <laughs> they hurt me here. <laughs> and a little bit in the tummy. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now, doesn't that feel better? <laughs> it's, no. It still hurt me. <laughs> All right. I would diagnose Anakin with something called borderline personality disorder. Now, I want to be very oh, clear. Okay. People with borderline personality disorder don't end up to be they don't homicidal into... lunatics. Oh, they don't massacre children and blow up entire planets? No. So I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and diagnose Anakin with borderline personality disorder. Great. Which is a inability to manage emotions effectively. Okay. Say, like Anakin, a lot of people with borderline personality disorder, or BPD from here on out, a lot of people with BPD act are actually high-functioning in many areas of their life, but their interpersonal relationships are garbage. Okay. Right? And you see that with Anakin. He excels at all sorts of force-related activities, but he can't, he can't hold down any sort of relationships. Yeah, he's constantly in trouble with Padme and is always either pushing her away or... Put, yeah, it's yeah. bad. Well, and unlike bipolar, where the mood swings tend to occur over longer periods of time. With borderline, it can happen really fast, oh, within yeah. minutes or even hours. And you see this a lot with Anakin, where he's just turning on a dime, you know? And BPD is often associated with adolescent trauma or childhood trauma, loss, or neglect. Anakin, he's a child slave. His life was regularly in danger. And he had the secure attachment with his mom. Mom, mom, I'm home. He loses that. He connects with Padme and Qui-Gon as attachment figures. Qui-Gon dies, Padme leaves, and Anakin is stuck with Obi-Wan. You will be a Jedi, I promise whose style of mentoring is largely harsh criticism. You're focusing on the negative, Anakin. Be mindful of your thoughts. You look tired. You're sweating. We will not exceed our mandate, my young Padawan learner. Besides, your senses aren't that attuned, my young apprentice. What took you so long? You know I don't like it when you do that. I don't mind flying, but what you're doing is suicide. That was some shortcut, Anakin. He went completely the other way. Then we decided to come and rescue you. Good job. That's freaking traumatic. And right. I will agree with you that the films didn't really explore the trauma of that. Right. Had they, you'd have a better case for why Anakin is the way he is. As it is, we kind of have to... It's kind of like happy kid. Yeah. He's and like... then cut to 10 years later. Well, he's a little... He's, oh, master. He's, he's sad that, his, that he's being separated from his mom, but we sure. never really feel that he's gutted. I care for you too. Oh, my eye. It's your mother. It's just like, oh, well, that's a bummer. There's a writing problem there, but there's also a big performance problem, which most performance problems are direction problems. And I think in this case, it was just, yeah, it was a combination of a director not being able to connect with a kid. Yeah. Because directing kids is hard. Yeah. And uh, a kid who maybe wasn't the best actor. I can't do it, Mom. I just can't do it. Probably with Steven Spielberg directing, would have gotten a brilliant performance. Yeah. But that is not the world That's we live in. not what happened. Doctor Strange, see what you can do about that. Today's episode is brought to you by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN 
which of course is a virtual private network. It protects your security online, and that's great. But let's get real. <laughs> We're going to use this to watch shows in other countries. Yay! So many shows in other countries! You can unlock the 15 largest Netflix country libraries oh, from crazy. around the world. Have you ever been to another country and logged into Netflix and it's like Christmas oh, morning, like all these movies that aren't on Netflix? So much great stuff that we don't get in the U.S. And you can unlock all of it. Like Friends. They, they have Friends. They, they have Rick and Morty. Doctor Who. Oh. Which, come on, Whovians. And it's not just Netflix. No, it's not. There's BBC iPlayer, which is sort of my guilty pleasure. I love it. basically anything the BBC does. Hulu, a bunch of other streaming services. All kinds of stuff that you can access. So you can unlock this content by installing the VPN on your computer, on your phone, on your smart TV, whatever your device is. And speaking of devices, you can use it on unlimited number of devices at the same time. Wow. There are apps for all platforms, 24-7 customer support, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. And to do all that, go to surfshark.deals slash cinematherapy, use our code cinematherapy, cinematherapy. Yep. and get 83% off and three additional months free. 83? 83% off. I've never heard of an 83% off deal. That's very huge. specific and very large. Surfshark VPN, thank you for sponsoring this episode. Thank you for keeping us safer, and thank you for helping us watch more shows and movies. Watch all the movies. Ooh. Please. So there are nine criteria to qualify for borderline personality disorder. Anakin hits seven of them. Oh boy. Seven out of nine. So first of all is a uh, fear of abandonment. The thought of not being with you. I can't breathe. He's obsessed with saving his mom and not losing Padme. Yeah. And then later he practically begs Luke to join him once he's Vader. Join me and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. Cause he, he knows the emperor the Emperor's always looking to trade out. Kill him. Kill him now. The Emperor is kind of a sleazy boyfriend. And he's... <laughs> <laughs> and he's always... <laughs> oh, <laughs> and he's always looking to trade up for it. He's looking to trade for a younger model. He always he's is. Always is. And yep. so... <laughs> Anakin slash Vader, he, he's trying to do away with the Emperor and connect with Luke, and he's practically begging Luke to join him. Mm -hmm. So Anakin really, really wants connection, even as Vader, even when he's killing people left and right, like he still wants the same thing, which is belonging. <laughs> we see in Borderline Personality Disorder unstable yes. or changing relationships. So he's got this power struggle with Obi-Wan, who he sees as a father and a mentor, and then he hates his stinking guts within seconds. Right. <laughs> Right, yeah. and it just happens in one scene. <laughs> and that's the thing with with borderline personality disorder is mentors and people that they look up to. You're either savior or devil, right? Okay. Nobody understands me, but you do, right? Until you don't. Until you don't, and then and, I hate you, right? Right, which he does with Obi Wan, and he later does with Padme. You're the only one who understands me. You're the only one I, that I can really love. And then the moment he thinks that she's with Obi Wan, he like force chokes her. You brought him here to kill me. No. I strongly suspect that you are loving this video because you've been watching it for several minutes and you haven't clicked away. Don't click away right now. Instead, click subscribe, like, hit the bell. That way you'll get notifications. It helps us in the algorithm and uh, we'll all be happier. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> also, when he tries to get Padme and later Luke to team up with against the Emperor to rule together as husband and wife or father and son. Whether you and I can rule the galaxy. We can rule the galaxy as father and son. His relationships are unstable. He latches onto whoever seems like a healthy attachment. Come with me. Anakin, anywhere, he's just leapfrogging from person to person. Mm. From his mom to Qui-Gon, no, those two weren't his fault. Obi-Wan, that's not working that well, so I'm gonna try, try it with Padme, right? And then Palpatine is grooming him the whole time. And I do think there's actually a really good episode about Palpatine and, oh, grooming, yeah, and grooming that grooming. we could do it's, sometime. Ugh. Yes, Anakin, come closer, I have good news. Palpatine takes advantage of the fact that Anakin's looking for, he's looking for someone to accept him, someone to praise him, someone to see how great he is, and everyone in his life is so critical. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a perfect way for him to like plant these seeds. I have said it many times, you are the most gifted Jedi I have ever met. Thank you, Your Excellency. I see you becoming the greatest of all Jedi, Anakin. And then later, I think he sees Luke as the best candidate. Right? Join me and we can rule the galaxy as father and son because he knows at this point, I have a son who's still alive. Mm -hmm. Palpatine implied that I don't. I believe this whole time that I'm alone and I now know that this person that I've attached to for 20 years has been lying to me. Mm -hmm. 
And so he sees Luke as this healthier attachment. And this is what happens a lot with borderline personality disorder is you're on a pedestal or I hate you. Liar! No! Another criteria is unstable self-image or sense of self. Mm -hmm. So sometimes he comes across as really arrogant and other times as really insecure. Especially in Attack of the Clones, Anytime he's around Padme, it's deeply insecure. You're exactly the way I remember you in my dreams. I need you to love me, trust me. I hated them, so I killed them all, but I need you to accept me anyway. I know I'm better than this. Which she does, which is a whole other which episode. Which makes no sense <laughs> whatsoever. Um, so he goes from this extreme arrogance to, I wasn't strong enough to save you, Mom. I can do anything to... I'm a loser, right? And this is this is indicative of borderline personality disorder. Next is he's got this impulsive or self-damaging behavior. We'll take him together. You're going slowly on the left. Take him now. No, Anakin, no! No! So in real life it looks like excessive spending, un unsafe sex, drug abuse. You wanna buy some death sticks? Dangerous, risky behaviors. And Anakin, like here he is during when they're driving through Coruscant and he he's jumping out of cars without a parachute. If you'll excuse me. I hate it when he does that. He's doing all sorts of stuff. Like, he kisses Padme even though he knows he's not supposed to. Once he's Vader... He doesn't know that she wants him to. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, winging a prayer, buddy. And he's so reckless. Like, when Obi-Wan says, I've got the high ground, and Anakin's like... I'm gonna rage jump you. <laughs> you you underestimate, underestimate my power. <laughs> now, now, I'm just, now I'm just trying to piss you off. <laughs> doing a good job. What he doesn't show is suicidal behavior or self-harm. That's true. We don't see any of that. Yeah. Um, he's got mood swings, like so, so many examples of mood swings. We could partially explain him. I mean, my theory was Dark Side rushes in in Revenge of the Sith and then rushes out and is replaced by a light in, Re in Return of the Jedi. But it could also just be accounted for that he's got- just be mood swings. <laughs> Felt <laughs> evil today. Might take it down later. <laughs> so Anakin's got real problems with anger and yeah. control and violent outbursts. Take a look. Wow. When you put it all together, you really get the scope of it. It's a lot. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, which of course you are, there is an extended commercial-free director's cut on our membership site, our low-cost membership site, low along cost. with relationship courses that I have crafted especially for you to help you with your connections and family and romantic and friend relationships. All sorts of cool stuff, so check out the link below to learn more. And then the last criteria that he meets is he's got stress-related paranoia. Uh -huh. right? He believes the Jedi are taking over. He believes that Padme's turned against him. He believes that she's in cahoots with Obi-Wan, which... Is insane. It's just a... Is it, though? You've seen Obi-Wan, right? Oh, oh look, you mean, mean script-wise? A... Sure. No, if it, was, if it was you and McGregor, I'd be in cahoots with... Come on. <laughs> Come on. So, uh, can I blow your mind for a second? Please do. Okay, I'm going to admit that I relate to Anakin Skywalker. Ew! You? What? I... Ew? <laughs> that's, that's an ew for Anakin, not ew for BPD people. That's a... <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I hate sand. That's how I relate. <laughs> um, I have, have had, you know, relationships crumble, and then I have pushed people away from relationships with me, like, as testing Right? Yeah. Which is a thing that Anakin does. Yeah. And Test boundaries. It, will, will you truly stay? Because I can't feel safe about you in my life until I know you'll stay. Yeah. And so I kind of have to push you hard to see if you will. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. And, you know, to the point where I... I it was even beyond that. It was just predicting, okay, you're going to leave at some point, so I'm just going to push you away now. Uh, you know, if you can't take me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. <laughs> like every... Sassy Southern woman. Wow. <laughs> so just put that in your etouffee and chug on it. I do think I would look good with a Padawan braid, though. Oh, no, you would look phenomenal. Okay. You would rock that terrible haircut. What's been healing for you, then, or are you still in that place? 
Uh, no, it, what's been healing for me really is, is having a very, very strong, um, secure relationship with my wife. Yeah. Where I, I mean, and to the point where I have, because of my issues, I have done some of the things where I've tested boundaries with her and yeah. I've, you know, caused heartache for her. And it's often not conscious. It's not like I'm going to test boundaries and see if they're going to stay. It's, oh no, it's, it's definitely not. Yeah. It's definitely not conscious, but that has happened. And my, my wife is a rock star. She is. She absolutely just, <laughs> uh, in the most loving way possible, just would not put up with my bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and knowing that, like, you know, I choose you is, like, the ultimate for her. Yeah. Having that kind of relationship in my life, it's hard to even have those feelings anymore. Yeah. I mean, I still do. I, you know, I have imposter syndrome and I have worries that people are going to catch on to my crap. But she believes in your goodness. Yeah. There's good in him. And that helps you to believe in it. And it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It doesn't no, have to be a spouse not. or partner. I know there is good in you. The Emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. But we can get that. And if we don't have that in our lives, I mean, this is why. So let's talk about treatment for a second. Treatment for Anakin would be DBT group therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy. Okay. Um, I would do individual therapy, but I also do group therapy. DBT focuses on mindfulness. It focuses on being aware of your emotions and not letting them control you because Anakin has a real problem with that. Yeah. He is not, I mean, it's something that Yoda and the Jedi are always talking about being in the present moment. Don't center on your anxieties, Obi-Wan. Keep your concentration here and now where it belongs. But Master Yoda said I should be mindful of the future. But not at the expense of the moment. In Empire Strikes Back, Yoda talks with Luke. Basically, Yoda's teaching Luke DBT skills. Never his mind on where he was. Hmm? What he was doing. And it's something, one of the good things from the Jedi that he could get is being in the present moment, not being controlled by your anxieties, not being controlled by your fears, and, and being able to take proactive steps in your life when it comes to, okay, I'm feeling this, what should I do with it? Mm -hmm. But Anakin doesn't really possess that. You need regular exercise, which Anakin, especially as Vader, I mean, he gets quite a bit of exercise. A lot of exercise. <laughs> <laughs> And you need good rest, you need meditation, and then a thing that really, really helps is catharsis, is releasing your pent-up hurt and anger in a healthy, appropriate way. Like this. No, no, not like that. Okay, let's go over this again. Yeah. Catharsis is, you don't hurt people. Oh. So you need to release emotions in a way that isn't slaughtering a bunch of rebels. Okay. It's like... Like this. No. No? No, okay. I mean, more, more like this. See? That's better. He let his emotions out and he didn't even hurt any... Okay, that's awesome. But ultimately what helps Anakin is what helped you. Yeah. Which is somebody just loving him unconditionally. And tell me if your wife does this with you, because Luke shows up and he does something for Anakin that Anakin hasn't had since his mother, which is somebody who loves him completely unconditionally, but also draws boundaries. I will not fight you, Father. Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely the same. 100% unconditional love, draws boundaries, has, you know, expectations. Yeah. All of that. And believes that he can be better. Suit your feelings, Father. You can't do this. I feel the conflict within you. Let go of your hate. At the beginning of Revenge of the Sith, for the first half an hour, it's like, oh my gosh. He's in a good place. This is where the fun begins. We kind of like this guy. Yeah, yeah. This time we will do it together. I was about to say that. And then that goes south really fast. What ends up happening with Luke is Luke shows up and Anakin his whole life has just wanted to belong. Mm -hmm. His whole life he's wanted people to respect him, to admire him. Palpatine was right when he says, you've been looking for a life of significance, mm -hmm. right? Obi-Wan's too critical. The Jedi Order teach him not to connect. They teach him to love and to have compassion, but connection is forbidden. Right. Don't have attachments. Yep. And they're still banging this drum with Luke in Empire Strikes Back when Ghost when Ghost Obi-Wan and Yoda are like, you know, 
they're, they're like, don't go after Han and Leia because you know those connections are going to lead to your destruction. Don't try and save them. Let them die, basically. And don't try and redeem your father. You have to just kill him and stop him. And Luke basically doesn't listen. Yeah. And he says... He basically, I mean, The Last Jedi does a good job with this. Luke doesn't believe in the old Jedi Order and their ways. Yeah, he's moved beyond it to something that's truer. Yeah, yeah. which is that connection is healthy. <clears throat> and when Anakin finally has somebody who loves him unconditionally, somebody who expects the best of him, somebody who does draw clear boundaries, and especially when Anakin rages, Luke stays calm. Right. Right? And that is essential with borderline personality disorder patients and friends and family, is when they rage, you stay calm. Because they're trying to test you, whether they realize it or not, they're trying to test you to see if you'll stay. And when you are calm and you say that's not okay and you draw a clear boundary, but you're calm and you love them unconditionally, they can start to believe in it. Your thoughts betray you, Father. I feel the good in you, the conflict. And in Anakin's case, Luke was willing to die for him. If you will not be dead, you will be destroyed. At which point Anakin really finally believes this is a connection that's not going to leave. I'm not going to lose unless I don't do something. Unless right. if I don't do something, I'm going to lose this connection right this now. Connection, yeah. Luke doesn't redeem Anakin, but he does open Anakin up to redeem himself. Right. Which is ultimately what happens. We talked about this in our Kylo Ren episode. Uh, I love that you opened this episode by saying you love Star Wars even though it hurts you. You know, <laughs> <Yes>. I think <laughs> I, I think a lot of Star Wars fans, we have things that we love and things that just drive us crazy. And they drive us crazy because we love it, because we want it to be great. I want it to always be excellent. <laughs> and when it falls short, it hurts. You weren't there at the beginning. You don't know how good it was, how important. This is it for you. This jumped up firework display of a toy advert. It does, but the power of Star Wars through it all is that love redeems, that connection heals, yep. that when we believe the best in people, they can rise up to it. Yeah, like Luke says, I am a Jedi, like my father before me. He just blots out all of the Darth Vaderness and just goes to Anakin Skywalker, who was a Jedi, and he's willing to die for that belief. Yeah. And that's what does it. And that's what brings Anakin back. When you're dealing with someone who has borderline personality disorder, draw boundaries, love them unconditionally, be calm when they rage. If you are struggling with borderline personality disorder, you have my sympathies, it's hell, and you didn't ask for it, and you're not choosing it, but it's there. How you work through it, one, you need support. Yep. DBT therapy, individual and group therapy, finding people who will love you unconditionally, I know is the greatest struggle, but when people tell you they love you, choose to believe them. When people, sh well, please. sometimes they could be manipulators. So when people show you that they love you through consistent yes. doing right by you, you don't need to test them. You just need to believe them. And that is healing. Thank you, Jonathan. Yes. I feel ever so slightly healed, both of my anger about Star Wars, the prequel films, <laughs> and uh, the the borderline personality traits that I have had in my relationships. Thank you for saying that. Thanks. Thank you for being vulnerable. So until next time, I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. <laughs> and watch, watch movies. movies. <laughs> I don't like sand. It's coarse, and rough, and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Not like you. Here everything is soft and smooth.